Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now the Bluetooth Standards Group have just announced LE Audio, that's Bluetooth Low Energy Audio. Now this is a big and exciting announcement. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Now Bluetooth is basically split into two parts. You've got Bluetooth Classic, which is what Bluetooth 1 and Bluetooth 2 and Bluetooth 3 was. And then you've got Bluetooth Low Energy, which is what was introduced in uh, Bluetooth 4 and then extended in Bluetooth 5. Now whenever you use your wireless headphones or your wireless earbuds, or whether you use a Bluetooth speaker, you are using Bluetooth Classic. Okay, now Bluetooth Classic hasn't really changed much for quite a number of years. But as I said, when Bluetooth 4 came out, you got Bluetooth Low Energy. Now Bluetooth Low Energy, of course, doesn't use as much power as Bluetooth, which is great for battery life. However, it hasn't until now had a solution that we can use audio over Bluetooth Low Energy. Bluetooth Low Energy is mainly used for, you know, for, kind of for your smartwatches and your fitness trackers and all that kind of thing. It's not been what we've been using for audio. Now, audio is a huge segment for Bluetooth. In fact, last year they sold almost 1 billion audio products that use Bluetooth Classic for transporting those audio signals. So it's about time that we had a solution for Bluetooth Low Energy that allows us to use audio. And that is what the Bluetooth uh, Standards Group have announced today. LE, Low Energy, LE Audio, which is gonna become part of the Bluetooth Standard. Now, LE Audio has several different parts to it. Let's start with the simple part, which is the idea of listening to music using your wireless headphones or using a wireless speaker. Now, we have to talk for a moment about a thing called a codec. Now, a codec takes the raw stream of audio, whether that's you're watching something on YouTube, you're listening to actual music on a music player, you're watching a movie, whatever, and it compresses it down so that it can be sent over the uh, Bluetooth connection. Obviously, the less data you send, that means it can be sent quicker, and also it doesn't use your battery as much. So you don't wanna be sending the raw, uncompressed version, it'll kill your battery, and it probably won't hit the quality because of the data transmission rates. Now the standard Bluetooth codec until now has been the low complexity subband coding codec, the SBC codec. Now audio files will tell you that SBC does have some limitations in terms of its fidelity and in terms of the quality of the audio that it can reproduce. Now the SBC runs at around 345 kilobits per second. Now of course you want the smallest amount of data that you can send because it can be sent quicker and also the less sending you have to do, the less your battery is used. So less data means speed and it means better battery life. So it, got, it runs today at around 345 kilobits per second for stereo music coming through to your headphones. Now the problem with Bluetooth Low Energy is actually it's not as fast as Bluetooth Classic. Now a Bluetooth Classic connection at an application level, that means when you strip away all the protocols and things, can get through about 2.1 megabits per second, so 2,100 kilobits per second. Now, as you all know, when you start to move away further from your Bluetooth source to the headphones, you know, you leave your phone and you kind of walk away a bit, you move the speaker a bit further away, then that data rate is gonna drop. If you have to go through a wall, through obstacles, the data rate is gonna drop. So although we're talking about 2,100, actually the reality in a real world situation can be much lower. And then also if there are other Bluetooth devices around, you've got Wi-Fi running, that 2.4 gigahertz band can get quite busy. So Bluetooth has to be able to squeeze down that data into something that can reliably go over that Bluetooth connection. Now, as I said, uh, the standard codec, SBC, runs at around 345 uh, kilobits per second. Now, Bluetooth low energy at the application level, once you strip away all of the uh, protocols, is about 1.3 megabits per second, 1,300 megabits per second. So significantly less than what you get in Bluetooth Classic. So we're gonna need a new codec that is better at compressing that audio so that the connection remains good and you still keep your quality. And to that end, the Bluetooth Standard Group are announcing a new codec, the Low Complexity Communication Codec. So that's LCCC, so they're calling it LC3. So the new codec for LE Audio is LC3. 
Now the question is, how good is LC3? Now one of the things that they wanted to do, of course, was to beat SBC in terms of its fidelity and its quality, and at the same time they wanted to lower the bit rate. So LC3 claims that at maybe around half of the bit rate, it can actually offer a better quality than SBC. That means it can fit into the bandwidths that are available inside Bluetooth Low Energy, and at the same time boost the audio quality that we actually get with SBC. So they're saying at around 192 kilobits per second, you're gonna get better audio than you're getting with SBC. And in fact, that could even drop down to 160 kilobits per second and still be SBC in terms of the overall quality and fidelity. But that isn't the only advantage of the LE audio system. There are some really important things in here that are actually finally gonna change some really fundamental things about audio. The first is, is that if you've got these Bluetooth earbuds, it can actually speak to them individually using a standard way. Now, in the past, all the different manufacturers have come up with different systems on how you can get two individual earbuds to talk to each other. Now, uh, LE Audio supports independent, synchronized audio streams to multiple devices. And the first practical example of that would be to use the earbuds. But not only that, now multiple people can listen to the same audio stream. So if two or three of you are watching something on a laptop or maybe on a mobile phone, you can both connect your Bluetooth uh, equipment to it and you can both get synchronized independent audio streams so you can enjoy the movie or the music together without disturbing uh, other people around you. And then as a further extension to that, they also have the idea of audio broadcast. Now this is a really, really great idea. If you walk into a venue that has multiple screens, uh, you know, maybe some kind of restaurant and they've also got televisions up there with sport or news or whatever, of course you never hear it because they always turn it down. You can't hear what's going on there. But with Bluetooth broadcast, LE Audio Broadcast, you can tune in your headphones and say, I want to pick up what's going on from that television. And lots of people in the room can do that together. In fact, you can have it in different languages. So if it's a news channel, let's say like Euro News that we have here in Europe, that is in multiple languages, then you can actually tune it in to the, the pictures are the same and you can see the audio coming through. So this is really, really going to be helpful when we come to these venues with lots of screens and you never get to hear the audio now you can tune in of course that can also be extended to you know kind of to cinemas there's also lots of applications for people who have hearing problems you can incorporate this into uh, hearing aids there's a whole bunch of applications and this is going to be part of the standard so it's not going to be some proprietary thing where someone does a system and they make it you know a television that supports this or a projector that supports this or a hearing aid that supports this or headphones that support this and you can support it just like we support Bluetooth now across all the different devices, both sources uh, and the headphones for listening. Okay, so a few other things that I've picked up. I sent the Bluetooth people some questions because I was wondering about uh, some of these. Now, the first, of course, is how good is the LC3 uh, codec? Well, really, we're not going to find out until we see this in actual products. Uh, and then, of course, we can do some testing and see whether their claims about the quality are really held to be true. I really hope they are held to be true. But I did ask a couple of other questions. One is, which version of Bluetooth will support this? So the news is, you're going to have to have Bluetooth 5.2 or greater. Now 5.1 is the current Bluetooth standard at the moment of making this video. So when 5.2 comes out, it will include LE audio. And when you start to buy products that are audio products, they're gonna have to say supports Bluetooth, LE audio with Bluetooth 5.2. That's what you're gonna need if you wanna make sure you're getting hold of this tech. And the other thing I asked them was, well actually if LC3 is that good, couldn't we just have LC3 on Bluetooth Classic? Because on Bluetooth Classic, not only have you got SBC, of course you've got other ones from other manufacturers like APTX, HPTX, HD, and all these optional ones. Well actually LC3 can be used as an optional codec on Bluetooth Classic. So it's gonna be interesting to see what support we get from Android or Windows or iOS and from you know the big companies like Sony and whatever what support we're going to get it's going to be interesting to see how the market unfolds in what it chooses to do in that will Bluetooth Classic live on 
but using LC3, or will we all eventually move over to uh, LE Audio? It'll be interesting to see how this uh, unfolds. Talking of seeing things unfold, what are the time frames for all this? Well, today the standard is being announced, okay, and then it's actually going to be published and given out to the chipset makers and the audio equipment makers, and then finally we're going to see the headphones made, and then maybe we can start seeing smartphones. You know the story. It's a long process. In fact, until we've kind of got you know commonplace coverage of Bluetooth LE, you're talking maybe two to three years. In terms of early adoption, then I'm sure, yes, in sometime in 2020, we're going to start to see chipsets and then products that are appearing in uh, audio equipment that we can start using. But don't expect to buy anything today, but look out for it during the course of this year because new things will start to appear. Okay, that's it. So LE Audio, I think it's really exciting. Less power, faster data rate, better quality, new features like audio sharing and audio broadcast. They sound really good to me. Do tell me in the comments below what you think about uh, the advent of LE Audio. Are you looking forward to it? Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do get a thumbs up. Please do consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.